All right, so I'm going to uh, give some details on the current status of uh, Fuse BPF and you know, some of the things where we are still sort of debating where we want to go. So yes, Fuse BPF is um, kind of taking, you know, when you have a Fuse file system, oftentimes what you are doing is you're making some modifications and then dealing with a, um, a lower file system in some way. And this is one of the efforts to try to kind of formalize that, uh, that behavior. So we want to perform similarly to the native file system, at least as close as we can get to it. And you know, still keeping all of the nice ease of use of Fuse. So, you know, we have nice defined entry points and uh, we're trying to keep the interface similar to what you would see from the Fuse daemon. So just a brief overview. When you're using uh, like classic Fuse as a stacked file system, you end up uh, transitioning to and from user space several times. You know, calling out to the, uh, the Fuse daemon and then back in through the VFS layer. And uh, within Fuse BPF, we try to stay inside of the kernel as much as possible. So this is our uh, kind of general flow. You have a, uh, a call come in. You optionally filter some of the, um, the inputs to whatever uh, command you're running. For instance, if you're doing a lookup, maybe on the lower file system, you have some different named file you want to look up. And we have an optional call out to do the same from user space if for what re whatever reason what you're doing can't be done from in BPF, say you're like reading from a database somewhere. Uh, then we will handle the backing call directly with the, uh, within the file system as a, you know, as a stacked file system. And then afterwards, there is a, another hook where the BPF can alter what has been returned. So you know, in, the, in, in the case of uh, a read, when you've got your data back, if there's like some sections you wanted to change there, or um, as one, one of our use cases for this is um, during cer certain sorts of accesses, we want to hide a, uh, like a, the existence of a directory. So in that case, we might alter the, uh, the error code that's been returned to you know, not seeing that it's there at all, as opposed to a permission error. So we've, uh, we've switched over to using a BPF uh, struct op uh, call. In our uh, V1 of the patch, we were adding our own uh, program type and had an awful lot of void stars, which was kind of unpleasant to deal with. Uh, so we have more or less two op codes uh, per uh, fuse call. We have our pre-filters and post-filters. Uh, for the most part, these are just uh, giving access to generic structs. Uh, some things are being handled within a special fuse buffer, which I'll go into more details in the uh, next slide, but that's mostly for fields that have variable length, like strings and uh, data buffers. And you know, we also have the option from this BPF program to say, actually, we want to just use normal fuse, so you, know, you can fall back to that path. And one of the, uh, the nice parts about the struct op implementation is uh, you only need to implement what you need. So, you know, let's say, to give a very dumb example you would never actually want to do, uh, if your stacked file system was just adding a character at the, e the uh, end of every file name, then you would just like, do an adjustment in lookup. You would have to do some things for reader, and that would 
I think basically be it. But yeah, if, if you're doing minimum changes, then you only have to worry about the specific like sections that you care about changing. So more on what uh, fuse buffers are. Ideally, we would just expose these as dyne pointers, but we're trying to avoid unnecessary copies. For instance, when we're handling a lookup, we have an existing string inside of the uh, inside of the uh, the dentry, the dentry name. And naturally, we aren't going to randomly overwrite that. That would be bad. So instead, we create a copy it from um, a, uh, a helper call from these uh, fuse buffers. Uh, I had some nice uh, suggestions on the, the mailing list on a, uh, changing the names of these functions. But uh, this maintains information like uh, whether we had to reallocate the, uh, the buffer that we're using, which then fuse would clean up after the fact once we no longer need it. And uh, that reallocation is why we can't just use dyne pointers as is, although all of the interaction with the data is done through the dyne pointer helpers. So this is um, kind of how you interface with uh, using Fuse BPF. So you write your struct off program and uh, either at mount time or uh, at lookup time, you create a linkage between uh, no, a, a given like entry inode and uh, the struct op program that you want to be running with it and what the backing file is. Currently, we're just passing the FD number, which we're uh, then interpreting when we're doing the, uh, like dealing with the fused response. That uh, we're, we're open to changing that. Uh, in our in our use case, it didn't matter that we would have to have an additional uh, like FD to pass in, since we're doing that at one level and then inheriting the same directory structure underneath. But if you were say needing to do a different uh, mapping for every file, that would not be a nice uh, not be a very nice approach. Yeah, so. Just an example of uh, two of the opcodes we have. As, as you can see, for open dir and open, they're pretty similar. So there would be the possibility of combining things like this. Although, at least from your struct op imp uh, implementation, you could always just uh, you know, use the same program for both of these when you're defining the structure. Uh, so, Paul has run some uh, basic uh, performance tests on this. This is using a um, a RAM uh, like RAM disk, so it's uh, very much exaggerating the uh, the differences that we see. So, you know, we're seeing a lot closer to uh, to native performance, and like a, a real system, like the difference would be a lot smaller. I don't know if uh, Paul wants to make any uh, comments on. <laughs> yeah, th these are just th this is a RAM disk. So as as Daniel says, it's a fairly slow processor by modern standards and a fairly fast RAM disk. So it's really probably worst case scenario for I/O versus CPU. So, but this is what we got. I mean, basically, um, we're seeing significant slowdowns with fuse. I mean. Nothing. We we see far less, that's far smaller slowdowns when we actually use fuse in real life. I mean, it's it's like typically 10, 20 percent. Um, but in these exaggerated tests, we're seeing bigger slowdowns. Um, but and fuse, but the fuse BPF gap is much smaller, even slightly faster with the first one. That's probably an error. <laughs> so we still have like uh, a lot of things that we're. No, still working on. We've been focusing on the use cases that we have within uh, Android. So one of the big things on our list is uh, there's currently a difference in uh, the context that you're accessing things through. So you know, naturally, if you're going through the Fuse daemon, you're running everything from the Fuse daemon's credentials, and uh, 
we haven't done the correct credential mapping yet for uh, doing that in a similar way from our uh, stack file system. It is, it's on the to-do list, but I was uh, rewriting everything to use struct.op, so I haven't quite gotten around to that. Uh, we plan to uh, probably something like grab the daemon credentials in the uh, like init response or something like that. There's still some uh, opcodes we're not dealing with, like uh, ioctals. Ioctals are very fun. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to deal with like various things there. Uh, there are some cases where our pre and post filters are not fully hooked up. I haven't done that since if we are going to change any of the formatting there, you know, would prefer to do some of that work only mm -hmm. once. Sorry, sorry, I was gonna say for the daemon credentials thing, what I would say is um, uh, IAU ring had the exact same problem. Uh, and my understanding is the solution for this was that they fork off like a, like a thread from the actual process because it's too complicated to deal with all the credential stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that is practical for the BBF thing, but I just wanna say that since that is a problem that IU ring very painfully already went through, I would say if you can talk to, um, yeah, to see how they did it. No, I mean, uh, I merged a generic <laughs> API for this for okay. 6.4. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's called user workers, which is a generalization of this concept. I am all for using pre-existing stuff there. <laughs> One thing we found in Android is any form of thread switching and worker queues really s messes up latency. Uh, and basically we can't ship it. We've had huge trouble even with DM Verity because of its thre um, worker threads. Um, and I think it's really pretty simple. We just need to do all the IO from in the context of the fused daemon. As far as I can tell, every time I think this through, that actually seems like a great security model, and, actually, and the correct security model. I'm, I'm actually open, very open to discussing that, because it seems too easy. But every time I think about it, that seems to be correct. Because um, the fused daemon will then return, of course, the, the, the whatever it wants to the user space, so we'll get a double level. The fused daemon has to be able to do it, and the user space app has to be able to do it. Um, and I think that's the right model. It's, it's the, I mean, it's the model fused currently has, and it's, it's the model we should reflect in Fuse BPF. We shouldn't be changing that because it's tried and tested. Different question. Uh, I'm wondering about the pre and post filters in, in user space. Do you really need them? Like my thinking is, if you are already in user space with the pre filter, haven't you already paid the performance penalty and you may just as well do all the processing in user space? So we still save one transition there. So. Um, if we go back to the, uh, blah, blah, blah. that was the wrong direction. So going back to uh, here, yeah. So once we've gone out to user space, we still have like the extra call in through like, uh, you know, you're likely going to call back into the VFS layer through like various syscalls. So we do save that. There's, there's a lot less of a benefit. Right, right, but don't you probably have multiple syscalls there anyway, because otherwise you wouldn't have put your pre-filter into user space in the first place. And they're saying, if you go to user space, then you're probably doing expensive stuff, and then you may just as well stay there. Mm -hmm. One example we have is, is um, hiding information in files. You, you, what you'd probably do is set a, use some sort of BPF map to say which bits of the file has to go, say after a read, you, you do a read from the file that gets the data into a buffer, and then you use a map to say, these are the areas we have to send to user space, hopefully very small areas. Like in our case, it's taking the location information out of a picture. So user space is going to actually do the finding where it needs to, what it needs to modify and how, but only when you do a read from the EXIF header of the picture. So yes, for that particular read and that particular small part of the file, there's a high price to pay. You know, it's a picture, it's, it's megabytes in size, but all the rest of the reads just stay in, in the kernel completely. Right, so, so, yeah, that makes sense. If you stay there completely, like... If you stay in the kernel completely, I have no objections, but then you also have the BPF pre and post filters, right? What I'm saying is the case where you do not use your BPF pre filter, but you use your fuse pre filter, like the user space one. Well, I mean, in this particular use case, you, you only you only go to the fuse pre filter, the, the user the user mode pre filter, when the BPF pre filter has decided it's a good idea, which is a very small amount of the time. Yeah, exactly. um, and you've already read the data, yeah. and you're not really trying to optimize that part. That's that's the rare part. Yeah, exactly. So in this case, why bother 
Why in that case bother with a user space pre-filter? Why not just say, okay, this one rare request is handled completely in user space, not as a pre-filter going back to the kernel and then somewhere. Actually, the answer for that is possibly it's a better idea, but mostly I think that you quite often don't set up the necessary node IDs and so on to actually be able to call into user space through the normal fuse stuff. Um, so it's, it's a very different, we found it useful so far, and, and in particular in that situation I just described, it, it works. Um, another situation is, um, actually no, that one doesn't work. Um, I mean, the, the permission thing that Daniel was talking about, in, in, this, in, the, in the case that we can't decide whether, we, in some cases we can't decide whether we should show or hide the file from, um, from, the, from the BPF. It's rare, but it happens. It's to do with um, multiple groups. Um, in that case, you go to user space. And user space does a bit more processing. Um, but, it, but it happens at the same point in the flow after everything else has happened. It, it, it actually it makes the coding easier, is what I'm trying to say. But yes, but you don't get much performance. If, if every time you're doing a call, you're ending up in user space, then this is pointless. I, I d don't disagree. All right, so I think this is where I was confused yesterday, so I just want to make sure that I'm on the right track. Your thing does two things. One is sets it up so with a mapping where you can attach a backing file for an uh, existing open file. So when you look up mm -hmm. Infuse, you say, okay, here's a file descriptor that, that I want to associate with it, and now all operations are going to go to the backing file system. And then you also did all this pre-filter, post-filter stuff for every single operation. And mm -hmm. So like, so we've got two different concepts here. The actual like pass-through part, which is yeah. the association, and then this like pre-filter, post-filter thing. Yeah, right? so those are like uh, the, the kind of two things that it's doing. We, we personally, uh, I guess there are some cases where we're just using like pass-through itself. And um, I guess there's some like limited like uh, use for that, like I guess, as opposed to a bind mount, if you're doing a move across this and you have, uh, you know, two different backings on the same file system, then we end up not having the like xdev issue moving across the uh, bind mount. But right. So uh, for me, what I'm thinking of is like lazy loading. Right. Is like I, you mm -hmm. know, I intercept the lookup and I do the, I pull it in, and then from then on, I don't give a shit. I just want to use the the. Yeah, the backing thing, and like, and then the filtering stuff is just kind of like expanding. Yeah, so in that case, you would just set the uh, like the backing like uh, file, and you wouldn't set any BPF program, and it would just skip that entirely. Okay, so then this, so in that case, there is no BPF. Yeah, right? in that case, there is no BPF. Okay. During lookup, you can change the BPF. You can add one, you can change it, or you can remove it. And the same thing with the backing file. Um, so in your case, you look at you, uh, during the lookup, you see that the, the file you want is there. So you just say no BPF associate with this file done, and then and then it will be near native perform very near native performance. Is it? So is is lookup the only way I can attach something? I was thinking about it for the Compose FS. And that would basically attach something to everything, and I would rather do it on open than on lookup. So um, we have already had a complaint from Facebook about this. Uh, sorry, Meta. <laughs> um, and we've realized that, yes, we probably shouldn't be actually opening the file in every lookup. What we should be doing is associating the path. So we're going to change the lookup. We currently require an FD at lookup if you want to change it. Meta has requested that we make it so that you actually can just pa pass in a, a path, and I suggested a relative path to uh, an existing FD would probably be the, the usual FD plus path, either one of which can be null, would be a nice solution to that. So, so you basically, you can just pass in the FD of the, of the parent directory and the, the thing you're looking up, the name of the thing you're looking up. That should, we haven't done that yet, but that's what we're going to do. Um. When do you actually get to look up? Because we are working on atomic open. We had to do some dirty stuff for Atomic Open, didn't we? Yeah. So cur currently, um, our like um, we have to have like an existing object when we're uh, connecting. So we're generally doing that in like the backing. Like we already have like the folder that we want to have set up existing. 
we had like some like uh things where we were looking into setting up the linkage at like say make dirt time if you're like uh, the question was specifically about atomic open and i think the best the, the honest answer there is we haven't thought about it too much <laughs> but i think it can be done i just don't think yeah, I would it's interesting then just one more thing is um where where's your lookup if it's a lookup from an open coming in or if it's a lookup from a stat coming in so so where you attach it it's the lookup it's the first lookup I mean, when the dentry is created, um, and actually one interesting point was when the, if the dentry is even a negative dentry, we do it at that point. And that we didn't do that at first, and it, and it, it works so much better when we changed it, to, so we actually do it, we actually attach the BPF at, neg at, at negative dentry lookup time. And that, and, and that worked so much nicer. It's it was weird how big an improvement that was. Um, I'm just wondering, I wanted to ask if it's possible to allow attaching during lookup and during open or changing, and that, that should solve the problem. So um, given that one of the requests when, when people did fuse pass through was for changing the backing file, um, we're aware this question is coming. And what we've done is got a large bucket of sand and just shoved no. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're kind of avoiding that question because we just say there's obviously a lot of questions about locks. What would need? To, how would we protect stuff? What happens to stuff in the cache? There's just the whole slurry of questions that we are not ready to answer, quite simply. And we probably need the help of the experts in this room to answer them, frankly. If we're going to start allowing things to change, what does that do? And the answer is I don't actually know. So at the moment, I'm just saying you can't change it because I can at least tell you what's going to happen if I say that. And I don't, and, we, and there's no, and we don't have any use cases that we've thought of yet where changing it would be that useful. What if you don't think it should be made at open? Like, can you just leave it there? If you don't change it at open, but if you set something at open for the first time, would that have the same problems? So at, um, I mean, don't forget the the dentry and the inode are created at lookup time. Yeah, at, at that time you're going to set any stuff in that you want to see at lookup time. What if at lookup time you don't? yet put any BPF or any backing FD, and then later at open, could you do it at that point, or would that still be hard? That would be impossible, because at open time, all we have is the new inode. We don't have, well, I mean, I suppose we could go and dig about in the parents' inode, but that seems, the way we've engineered it is that the thing, the object you're looking at, the inode or dentry, whatever it is, we look into that and see whether it's got an associated backing inode or backing dentry, or, um, and so, at open time, there must be a VPF in the inode at that point, in our des current design. Not, yeah. Can't you have a backing file for an open file and a backing dentry for a lookup dentry? Two different things. It's different operations. You have I/O operations for a backup file, like Alessio's patches, patches, and you have uh, dentry uh, directory operations for uh, backing the entry, why mix the two? I, I, I don't necessarily know the answer, but I mean, the, the, what, what the, the, the simple logic I was going for was we're, we're gonna have backing, backing the entries for the entry, we're gonna have backing inos for the inos, we're gonna have backing files for the files. When they're created, we're gonna put those things in. Again, it was, other things could be done, but that is simple. It's understandable and you can work out what's gonna happen. Um, that's not saying we can't be, well, maybe we can't be clever. That's not saying people in this room can't be clever and do better things, but that's what we came up with. And it's, it is at least a simple model. It, it will probably be more complicated if you do it at, uh, at open time, for sure. And I think, c yes, and keeping the uh, implementation simple, <laughs> especially uh, at the beginning is probably a good idea. So let's not get too creative. Uh, just very quickly, we don't have to discuss it, but basically, uh, if we're going to be doing a thing where the uh, the in kernel thing or whatever will be doing path resolutions and stuff like that, um, you definitely want to make sure you can do resolve flags for it because if you if you if you allow. So because the, the issue is, is that, okay, so for Compose of S, it doesn't really matter because it's all a blob store. But if you imagine like the classic 
trivial example of like, oh, I, I want to have this thing where we re where I, I, I'm opening the files with the same file path that user space has given me. I just want to mess around with these other little things. Uh, if you don't support resolve flags, you're going to be looking at, oh, and now I have managed to escape outside of the slash that is controlled. I'm just saying, make sure that that's taken into consideration. I think I can say that, I mean, I'm kind of aware that we've skirted around the whole namespace problem because Android doesn't use them in this way, so we haven't really addressed that. I'm saying, like, even if, even if you ignore the namespace problem, like, 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 imagine if you have an unprivileged process that cannot access slash data or an Android or whatever. I, I, I yeah, whatever. So, so for instance, in that case, uh, but the, but the fuse daemon, I don't know what the security policy is, but let's imagine it can access slash data without any restrictions, for instance. And you ask, like, okay, well, I have slash data slash blah, which is where I'm storing some magical thing that I, that I, I give access to user space. Uh, to, to the user space program that it has access to Fuse. But now I'm like, oh, okay, well, I, I, oh, I, as user space, I trick through various tricky means to get you to do dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and then that gets passed into the BPF thing, and the BPF thing doesn't know that this is meant to be, that this is like the classic, like, extract a tar archive inside a thing problem, or like a container image problem, or like things we've dealt with other things. So open ad 2 has resolve flags, which handle this in the lookup path. If you just have the resolve flags, and you just pass them, that in theory would be enough. I mean, there are probably other things we, we might want, but at least, to me, it seems that resolve flags at least would be, yeah. I mean, it's, not, it's not probably not complicated to add. It's like one extra field. Yeah, I definitely will want to add that. At the moment, we just have the FDs because that is very straightforward and all the resolution has been done already, so. Yeah, so, now there, there are some, like, um, kind of general issues that we have run through uh, doing this. Uh, one of them, which falls more on like the, uh, the the fuse end is that when we're doing direct pass through, we're defaulting to like a node ID of zero, and if for whatever reason you've done this and now you've decided way down the line that you want to call out to the user space daemon, you're in this situation where you're like, ah oh, yes, um, we have user ID zero, oh that's node ID zero, and you want to do something with that, and you know libfuse will rightfully be like, no. We don't know what that is. So currently, you could in uh, BPF, uh, you know, assign a node ID and have some communication layer there. But it would be probably better if we can come up with some standard way of uh, of doing this, or like giving some block of IDs that uh, like BPF would be able to assign and like provide some means for user space to query more about them in, in this case. So that's, that's something that we haven't run into much, but <coughs> other, uh, other people might. Uh, another minor thing, uh, when I was setting up the struct ops uh, program, there isn't any existing module support there. So to get the patches I have working, I kind of have a, uh, a hacky moving a lot of fuse specific stuff into BPF and then having a like registration call out when uh, you register the fuse uh, module. But like, no, that's something that I'm going to look into uh, having more of a ability to register a struct op type from a module. I don't know if there are any objections to that. I think it's probably okay from uh, other talks. There's also an issue where uh, at the moment we have a whole lot of uh, like struct op callbacks. The, uh, when I was initially coding it up, I think I ended up at 63. But the limit was 64 and the actual limit was 37. So at the moment I have a hacky patch that is just you know, allocating uh, two pages instead of one page so we don't jump off of our trampoline. So that's a patch that needs to get cleaned up. And uh, you know, occasionally you've been running into some uh, limitations with Dyn pointers, although every time I run fetch, a lot of those seem to go away. And uh, <laughs> just had like uh, some adjustments I made to it a few days ago that went in. So over time, that part is getting like nicer and nicer. And you know, That'll probably make it particularly nice when we're dealing things with, uh, you know, when we're dealing with reader and we want to like iterate over uh, 
you know, like the like file descriptor type things. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have like, um, you know, we're plans for uh, upstreaming. Like, uh, it's a very big patch set currently. It's like 30 something uh, patches, and I'm trying to arrange it in a way to make it easiest, like, as easy as possible to review. And, uh, you know, currently I have uh, mostly pass through uh, patches up front and then uh, bringing in the BPF uh, changes later. And I don't know if anyone has any uh, thoughts on, uh, I guess, good partial steps there. Uh, so uh, this was a suggestion I was gonna make is to make it essentially two separate patch sets is the backing stuff first and then the BPF next. Because I think that, you know, I, su I have looked at it, I tried to look at it last night and I passed the fuck out. Because like it's 37 patches and like I'm looking at it kind of confused about, and this is why I'd asked the question because I got confused about like these are two very separate concepts and like I recognize that as a project it's one thing, mm -hmm. but like it was hard for me to grasp that initially and so like seeing it as like two different things would help, at least me, um, kind of like approach both of them in, with the right frame of mind. Yeah. I mean, like I guess part part of our our uh, hang up with that is just that uh, we see we don't see as much like uh, use for the uh, the pure pass through version of it, but like it is a good intermediate point. I do agree with. Uh. Right, I th I think that's the thing is like I I agree that it's probably not as useful, but is for for like uh, merging and like in, it's not to say that they both can't be merged at the same time, but just like from a review standpoint, mm -hmm. it's easier for me. But I mean, of course, now I know. So, like, whatever. So, very naive question: Why is it useful to pass through alone? I don't understand. It's so useful. I don't. I just maybe <laughs> you take it offline. It's so useful. Currently, if you ever use a fuse server, then you get a request for say lookup, say open, and you handle everything. You get read. You get write. Uh, I'm talking about the the old patches. So now. You can do for open for a specific file and, and reply with pass through all the I.O. on this file and it's done. Yeah. You can do the same. Answer lookup of a file or a directory that's more useful and then pass through every lookup read the operation. So it's very useful. I mean, uh, we have a use case for it. It's very useful. <laughs> and, and you need to follow the fuse objects <laughs> model. The Fuse protocol has inodes, right, nodes, mm -hmm. and it has file handles, files. And the operations are file operations or inode operations. So you need to have two different objects that you pass through. I, I don't see another way, but. I guess my feeling is slightly different. I mean, I'm, I'm not that I'm disagreeing, but I am slightly, when, when we were asked to do, or when, when people were proposing to extend file pass through to a directory pass through, I was kind of like, Without some sort of ability to filter that, that's. And actually, I mean, let's, let's get some credit here. The, there was a guy who presented fu X Fuse at which Plumbers in 2019, I think. And that it, his, his talk, although we didn't use any of his code, inspired us to think about this. When, when we, we, we heard that talk, we heard, we, we, we were asked for directory pass through. I put the two, the two ideas together, and n years later, and one pandemic later, this is what you get. So yes, I agree that uh, maybe directory pass through is not. So that that's the part that uh, I can't imagine why why it would be useful without some sort of filtering. But file pass through is is very useful. So <laughs> maybe you should start with uh, merging that. Just just file pass through, and then adding uh, directory pass through, and then BPF. I don't see why directory pass through is not useful. I mean, some directories are accessed natively, read, deal, create operations natively, and others are, are not. You need to go to the server. I don't see why that's right. wrong. Yeah, so no, I mean, to be, no, it doesn't. It, it just the, the, the yes, the, 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 the fuse lookup, not the fuse BPF lookup. 
and also set the thing. I mean, it, it, the only problem is that what you end up with is a tiny little requirement in one file in a deep directory makes the whole directory, you get the, you get the performance penalty of staying in queues. And that's, okay. well, it's not okay. We, we, we're actually, that's, that's exactly the reason why we started down this path. Yeah, no, um, I, so I'm not arguing that none of, like, I think all of this together is very useful, yes. right? And uh, I'm mostly just saying that, like, for my tiny brain, I had a hard time separating the two concepts. So it's not an issue because now I understand and now I'll know. But like, other than that, like I think there's a logical split there that might be helpful for the maintainer. But otherwise, like I think it's fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. There is one other fringe benefit of uh, with just the two uh, like like the pass through part. If you were to have uh, I guess two different uh, pass through directories to the same file system. When we do the move, like they're actually the same file system, so we don't run into xdev trying to move between them, which I guess you would with like a bind mount. Yeah. Let's go have a break. Oh, I guess one other thing I was going to throw out <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> if, if if we have a moment, just. Uh, one thing we have been considering changing. Uh, so currently we have a pre-filter, post-filter in our backing call. It would be kind of nice to just have like one BPF program here, which would then call some K-Funk-like thing to do the backing call in between so you could handle it all at once. So that's something that we are thinking about, but uh, I'm I'm a little scared of uh, verifying that and like the uh, not allowing people to do the wrong thing within that. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So now we have a 20 minute coffee break and afterwards there's some still some follow up on the BPF side so see you in a bit